Hey yo fellow investors, how are you doing? My name is Stijn and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're talking about a slightly different kind of company, especially compared to what has been the usual on this channel. The company we are talking about is Bank OCK or ticker symbol OCK. Soon, maybe later this week, I'm doing a video to talk about battery anode materials, especially as to why those are so attractive currently. So do make sure to stick around on this channel. Back to OCK. This is one of the first companies I've ever researched and one of the first stocks I've ever bought. And no bragging, but at the current price of $41, I'm up about 72% of the stock. And do keep in mind, it makes up almost 30% of my portfolio. So take my opinions with a grain of salt. But in this video, we're gonna answer the question, is OCK still good buy at $41 currently? And should you add this company to your portfolio? Let's dig in. First, what does the company actually do? Second, what about the management? Third, the financials and their latest earnings. Lastly, my own price predictions and buy targets. Let's go. So Bank OCK is an American regional bank, mainly operating in the south of the USA. And the first obvious question is, what does a bank actually do? Well, according to Google, a bank is a financial institution which is involved in borrowing and lending money. Banks take customer deposits in return for paying the customers an annual interest payment. The bank then uses the majority of these deposits to lend to other customers for a variety of loans. Cool, so customers can deposit their money with a bank. And for doing this deposit, the customer gets access to all kinds of services that the bank provides. So for example, online payments, the app and the website the bank provides, the security of using a bank, etc. And sometimes the customers also get interest on their money although that interest has been tiny in the last couple of decades. And then the bank can actually lend out this money, so the money the customers deposited to people looking for a loan. And those loans are for example a mortgage, a new car loan, those kind of things. And for those loans, the bank can of course gain interest. A mortgage can make for example 3 to 5% interest and other loans can go way higher. And the funny thing of a bank is that of the money the customers deposit, the bank only needs to keep a tiny percentage of. And there are different reserve requirement tiers, but for most intents and purposes, a bank only needs to keep about 10% of a deposit in reserve. This means that when all the customers of a bank combined, for example, deposit $100 million total. The bank then is able to lend out about $90 million and gain interest on this money. Do keep in mind, this is money the bank did not have previously. It's the customer's money. And therefore, they are able to receive interest over money the bank does not actually have. This is, of course, the epic business model all banks around the world make use of. If this is new to you, you should read into this yourself if you want to invest in OCK since this is the core of their business. But the basics I did explain in this video. Now, back to OCK specifically. In 2019, they were named the best bank of the South by money. And also from this list, America's best bank of 2021, or Bank OCK scored place 11 as a regional bank. From this list, we can tell they get about 8% return on equity, which is completely fine, and they have about a 42% efficiency ratio. An efficiency ratio is expenses divided by revenue. So for this number, lower is better, since then you have less expenses compared to your revenue. And OCK's 42 efficiency ratio is good, really good. 50% is about the goal for a bank, so them performing below that is great. Next up, Filtown, a value investor we should all look up to, actually holds a really large position in Bank OCK, probably because he thinks it's a great company. In his 2020 shareholders letter, he stated that Bank OCK, a truly remarkable bank run by who I believe is one of the best bankers in America, George Gleason. And he also stated that his basic philosophy should warm the heart of every rule one type investor. That's a value investor, by the way. But he continues on with, keep that low, lend only when you have a huge margin of safety and be ready with a lot of cash when other banks get in trouble. Awesome. So a great value investor with about $100 million under management sees this bank, 
Bank OTK as a great company with a great mindset. Of course, you should still do your own due diligence. Read up on George Cleason, watch some interviews, etc. But the business plan seems solid. Cool, but what about the management? Well, the board of directors is actually led by George Cleason, the man Phil Town just praised so highly of. He is probably the most important to read into. Read his shareholders' letters, watch his interviews. He is the man with the grand plan and he will probably with his company for his whole life. I personally love George and I just love how he's been with the company since the very beginning. And I think he's an awesome banker. But again, you need to trust him with your own money. The rest of the list is actually quite extensive and directors come from people of all roads of life. For example, Nicholas Brown has an engineering background, while Paula Cholmondele has an accounting background. Beverly Cole has a philosophy background etc 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 i just love how diversified this team is gender wise but also just how different their academical backgrounds are it is also good to note that most of these people have been with the company for years some even decades ock seems to have an extremely loyal employee and director's base and that's just awesome on to the financials we'll talk about some of the in my opinion most important metrics a really important metric for a bank is assets to liabilities and OCK currently has about 27 billion in assets and about 22.9 billion dollars in liabilities. 27 billion dollars is more than 22.9 billion dollars, therefore this is quite healthy. And if we look at their revenue growth, we can see that it has peaked in 2019 dipped slightly throughout 2020 and seems to be going up again in 2021. This is actually quite healthy behavior for a company during a crisis like this pandemic, especially for a company that is so reliant on mortgage loans being paid. In America, a lot of individuals and companies actually were excused to pay their mortgage for a little while. So this dip could have been a lot worse. Therefore, to see just such a slight decrease in revenue is great and just show the health of this company and the quality of the loans they actually make. Their EPS or earnings per share is kind of all over the place though and has been since about 2018 actually. You should look into this yourself, but I think this was mainly because of the fear that was already in the market back then. And I think this is fine and I think this will recover. And why I believe this is because OCK recently published stellar Q1 2021 results. Their net income, so earnings, came in at a solid $148 million for the quarter. And this is great for the company and is actually a new record. And subsequently, their EPS came in at $1.44 per share, which is also really great. Annualized gets to about $4.5 per share of earnings. The record of EPS before this one also came in at $1.40 per share, which was for the third quarter of 2017. And that resulted in about $3.66 of earnings for the year at its highest point. Therefore, this year is starting off with a banging quarter, which could also mean great things for the year ahead. And I cannot wait for things to come. But what about the buy targets? So remember Phil Town, the awesome value investor we've just talked about, he actually gave us his own buy targets for the company in his shareholders letter. He said that he pulled the trigger on a tranche for the fund at $30 on June 29, 2019. So we know that even back in 2019, which was before the stellar Q1 2021 results, Phil Town told that this company was a great buy at $30 per share. We are actually going to use the same formula that he used to get his buy targets. Do keep in mind these numbers are based on my opinions. If you think differently, you can change each number individually. And there's actually a margin of safety calculator on the Real One website, which is Phil Town's website. So check it out if you're curious. So let's start out with the EPS. I'll start out with a record trailing 12 month EPS. And if you want to be more conservative, you could load this number a bit. So the EPS I'll start off with is $3.66. Now we need to determine what we will grow this EPS at for the upcoming decade. And based on our past performance, we can see that 15% a year seems fairly doable. Then the future PE ratio, again based on past performance, and I think 20 is doable. So these numbers get us to a future EPS or earnings per share of about $15. So that $15 times our future PE ratio gets to a future share price of $300. So we are effectively predicting that if they grow their company, at 15% a year, OCK could easily trade at $300 per share as early as 2031. Awesome. So that calculated backwards at 15% a year, which is my minimum return on investment, 
we get to a fair share price to pay today of about $73 per share and a margin of safety or heavy buy target of about $36 per share. So should you buy OCK at $41? Well, if I were starting over again, had zero money in bank OCK and I like this company as much as I do now, yeah, I think I would buy a little. You're effectively getting a margin of safety of 40%-ish, which is still great. And the company has the potential to 7 to 8x in just 10 years. But the choice is up to you. I've actually encouraged my father to buy some shares at about $40 per share. So according to that suggestion, $41 is still a good deal. I however also encouraged him to keep cash on the sideline so that he can step in if and when this company happens to trade at lower prices in the future. Just keep in mind that this video is for entertainment purposes and I'm certainly no financial advisor. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a like and maybe even subscribe. Comment down below what you want me to talk about next and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.